Today we celebrate the obligatory memorial of St. Thomas Aquinas, 13th century uh, Dominican uh, priest who took uh, the greatest of reason, uh, science uh, in his day, uh, using Aristotle especially, and uh, combined it with instruction in the faith. And so that beautiful harmony of uh, faith and reason he really exhibited for us. I always say St. Thomas Aquinas saved my life when I was in my first uh, year of seminary, which was very crazy, and so much just Vatican, post-Vatican II confusion. Um, you know, he didn't know even if truth was connected to faith or if they had to be connected <laughs> sometimes because of what you heard. Well, I always say St. Thomas Aquinas saved my life. And I remember writing a paper on the happiness of man using St. Thomas Aquinas as my first delving into his summary of uh, theology uh, that he wrote. That's sort of his most famous work. And um, yeah, and it's been a, a super blessing for me, but for the whole church. When you read the Catechism of the Catholic Church, over and over again, you will hear Thomas Aquinas because he was so significant in helping us formulate um, our catechesis. In the midst of the church he opened his mouth, and the Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and clothed him in a robe of glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who made St. Thomas Aquinas outstanding in his zeal for holiness and his study of sacred doctrine, grant us, we pray, that we may understand what he taught and imitate what he accomplished. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since through the blood of Christ Jesus, you have confidence of entrance into the sanctuary by the new and living way he opened for us through the veil, that is, his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a sincere heart and an absolute trust, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold unwaveringly to our confession that gives us hope, for he who made the promise is trustworthy. We must consider how to rouse one another to love and good works. We should not stay away from our assembly, as is the custom of some, but encourage one another. And this all the more as you see the day drawing near. The word of the Lord. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. 
Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord and a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. A lamp to my feet is your word, a light to my path. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Is a lamp brought in to be placed under a bushel, uh, under a bushel basket? or under a bed, and not to be placed on a lampstand. For there is nothing hidden except to be made visible. Nothing is secret except to come to light. Anyone who has ears to hear ought to hear. He also told them, Take care what you hear. The measure with which you measure will be measured out to you, and still more will be given to you. To the one who has, more will be given. From the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. What is it that you have that keeps on growing and it's given more to you and if you don't have it, it keeps on being taken away from you, again, it's, it's vice and virtue. You have virtue, it builds, you know, especially the virtue of charity, which is uh, uh, the form of all the virtues. Uh, but vice, uh, vice just keeps on pushing us down and getting worse, unless somebody repents and actually willfully starts uh, choosing virtuous acts. So I think that's a great way to interpret uh, what one has, more will be given, and the one who has not, um, he'll lose what he has. Here is uh, one of my, it's actually what comes up in the breviary today for St. Thomas Aquinas. He did uh, quite a lot of teachings on the creed, and here is uh, a teaching on the centrality of the cross, and my favorite line from this is, Everything I ever learned, I learned from the crucifix. So here's St. Thomas Aquinas in his uh, teaching on the creed. Why did the Son of God have to suffer for us? There was a great need, and it can be considered in a twofold way. In the first place, as a remedy for sin, and secondly, as an example of how to act. So there you have it. Why did he have to suffer? To remedy our sin. Second, show us how to act. Pretty easy to remember. It is a remedy for in the in the it is a remedy for in the face of all the evils which we incur on account of our sins, 
we have found relief through the passion of Christ. Yet it is no less an example, for the passion of Christ completely suffices to fashion our lives. We can fashion our whole life around what he went through, the way he approached Calvary. Whoever wishes to live perfectly should do nothing but disdain what Christ disdained on the cross, contemnere, to hate, contempt. You have contempt for someone, that's the word in Latin there. Uh, contemnere, con hate, despise, whatever Christ hated from the cross, whatever he contemned. And then desire what he desired. That's it. Pretty simple way to live life. You know, hate whatever Christ hated, contempt, disdain is the word they're using here in the translation. Disdain whatever Christ disdained from the cross. Uh, desire whatever he desired from the cross. Really simple, harder to live, but really simple to, uh, uh, to have in our mind. If you seek the example of love, greater love than this has no man than to lay down his life for his friends. Such a man was Christ on the cross. And if he gave his life for us, then it should not be difficult to bear whatever hardships arise for his sake. We should be able to take on hardship because of what he took on. If you seek patience, you will find no better example than the cross. Great patience occurs in two ways, either when one patiently suffers much or when one suffers things which one is able to avoid and yet does not avoid. Christ endured much on the cross and did so patiently because when he suffered, he did not threaten. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and he did not open his mouth. Therefore, Christ's patience on the cross was great. In patience, let us run for the prize set before us, looking upon Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him bore his cross and despised the shame. That's all a quote from uh, the letter to the Hebrews. If you seek an example of humility, look upon the crucified one. For God wished to be judged by Pontius Pilate and to die. God wished to be judged by Pontius Pilate and to die. That's amazing. Jesus is God. If you seek an example of obedience, follow him who became obedient to the Father even unto death. For just as by disobedience of one man, namely Adam, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one man, many were made righteous. That's Jesus. If you seek an example of despising earthly things, maybe we call it detachment in modern language. If you seek an example of detachment, follow him who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Upon the cross he was stripped, mocked, spat upon, struck, crowned with thorns, and given only vinegar and gall, to drink. What detachment he had to experience from the material things of this life and even the, uh, the relational and the social, everything that was taken away from him. Do not be attached, therefore, to clothing and riches because they divided my garments among themselves, nor to honors for, the ex nor to honors, for he experienced harsh words and scourgings, nor to greatness of rank. For weaving a crown of thorns, they placed it on my head, nor to anything delightful, for in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. All of that, the virtue of uh, detachment. The power to live this rule of uh, the cross uh, is given to us from this Eucharist. Now, with great trust in our Lord's goodness, his provision for us, we bring our needs. For our church leaders, that the Lord conform them to his generosity in their faith and service, we pray to the Lord. For our civic leaders, that God grant them wisdom and courage 
in working for racial justice in our communities, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are living in fear, that the Lord comfort them with the firm knowledge of his presence, we pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, that the Lord increase the measure of faith given us, we pray to the Lord. For those who have gone before us in the hope of eternal life, that the Lord soon bring them into his loving embrace, we pray to the Lord. And for our mass intention today, Chris Hartley, that the Lord bring him and all of our beloved uh, deceased into his embrace, we pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you for hearing our petitions. We ask that you use these prayers joined to the sacred heart of your Son in this Eucharist to accomplish your glory. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice which we gladly present on the feast day of blessed Thomas Aquinas be pleasing to you, O God, for taught by him, we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Thomas Aquinas, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Lamb of God, You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. He who ponders the law of the Lord day and night will yield his fruit in due season.
Let us pray. Through Christ the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the living bread, that on the feast day of blessed Thomas Aquinas, they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Let us bless the Lord and give him thanks. O salutaris hostia, que celi pandis hostia, bella premunt hostilia, daro bulfer Three. 